Jeffries as Man Kirby, the ghostess with the mostess. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghosts as... Topper. what you're doing, Cosmo? Henrietta, you ask me that same question every time I take a picture of you. And not without reason, Topper. The last one you took made me look like a lump of dough. Turn your head a little more to the left. You better still take your head off all together. <laughs> What's for the birdie? <laughs> What's that? That, that uh, that's an eagle, dear. National bird of our country. I know. Where did it come from? Oh, uh, under the hood. Producing it suddenly is guaranteed to give the customer a look of pleasant surprise. It's no use, George. The man got more excuses than alibi eyes. Stop that. I didn't do it. They went on by themselves. You haven't got half enough light. Must have been a short circuit. Now, hold still a minute. Now, this will give the picture a little variety. Excuse me, ma'am. Well, that ought to make a nice action shot. There wasn't enough light anyway. Uh, what time would you like dinner? As soon as we finish here, Katie. Very Must be a loose connection now. Oh, for heaven's sake, Cosmo, leave the lights alone and take the picture. I can't hold this pose all night. You haven't got half enough light. Cosmo, you're blinding me. You blew the fuse. Snap her quick, Topper. She never looks lovely. Put more onions in it, though. George Kirby. Hmm? Look at me. Don't you notice anything different? Putting on a little weight, aren't you? George Kirby. You said that before, dear. A any other man looking at me would say, Marion, you look absolutely ravishing in your new hat. Oh, is that a new hat? Yes, it's a new hat. Where can good help, dear? Can't you even pay me a teeny compliment? What's eating you? I go out of my way to make myself beautiful for you, and, and, and you don't even know I'm alive. Well, you're not, are you? Uh... <coughs> Topper, darling, thank heavens you're home. What's wrong now? Oh, it's George. He's insufferable. He's insulting, he's boorish, he's unmannerly, and he's, he's unbearable. Lovers quarrel? He doesn't even know the meaning of the word love. I loathe him, I despise him. Stop, darling, on your way to the bank in the morning, would you return this to the millinery shop for me? It's right on your way. But, Marion... Well, you all you have to do is put it back in the window. They probably won't even know it was missing. <laughs> Uh, a I could have sworn it was floating. <laughs> for me? Yes, dear, it was floating for you. Oh, oh love is surprise. Oh, Cosmo, it's beautiful. I never knew you had such good taste in millinery. You know, on her it looks good. Oh, I'd better show it to Katie. Thank you, darling. 
proper. I want my hat back. Get my hat back from Henrietta. You asked me to take it back to the shop. Well, I've changed my mind. I want that hat. No, honey, don't make any trouble with it. He's already given it to her as a present. And why can't you be like him? You never bring me presents. Why can't you give me a hat? Here. Oh, that's my hat. It'll look better on Marion. Oh, I don't want your old second-hand presents. Oh, now do please stop this childish nonsense. Hey, where are you going with my hat? I'm going out to show it to Katie. What? <laughs> Oh, yes. Aren't you tired? Yes, dear. Oh, why don't you go to bed? No, thank you, dear. I'm not a bit tired. Besides, I want to see who committed this murder. All right, dear, but don't stay up too late. Oh, it couldn't have been him. <laughs> Good night, dear. Please get off my book. I'm not on your book. I'm on your lap. Well, my book's on my lap. Stop it, darling. Don't argue. I'm unhappy. What's the matter? Have you been squabbling with George again? Dropper, he doesn't understand me. Well, why don't you go and explain yourself to him? Let me finish my book. I, I know what I'm going to say. This sounds shocking, but... Well, I'm thinking of leaving George. Not thinking of leaving him here, I trust. I don't think you realize how serious this is. What would I do? Well, let's have no more of this nonsense. George is her husband, for better or worse, for richer or poorer. Until death do you part. Oh, I know all that, but... What did you say? I didn't say anything. You're doing all the talking. Until death do us part. Topper. George and I... Come on, Neil. Oh. Stop wobbling like that, will you? Oh, but darling, the difference in our but, ages means absolutely no, nothing. That is, darling, but Topper. What? Well, I never would have expected it of you. Well, now no, look here, the man George, of I... your age, reading those trashy ten-cent mystery novels. <laughs> what do you think of our lush hound? Not only kills a bottle of cognac, but tries to play the Undertaker too. I caught him burying the bottle. Hey, Marion, this dog's going to have a monstrous thirst after all this cognac. Wind up a batch of martinis so he can sort of taper off. You and your intoxicated friend can attend to your own affairs, Mr. Kirby. Do we know this woman? No? Well, then you go over and kiss your Uncle Topper, and I'll mix a batch of martinis. Please take this beast away. Matthew, call him all. It's Mr. Kirby's dog, not mine. Hey. What is all this Mr. Kirby business, honey? You will please address me by my maiden name, Miss Cook. Miss Cook? Marion, what's come over you? Until death do us part. Don't you see, Topper? George and I aren't married anymore. We're not? This is ridiculous. Why not in the least? And I'll thank you to move out of our room. Uh, my room. Oh, don't thank me. Thank you. What do you mean? So, we're no longer married. Now, just a moment, you two. No. Splendid. In fact, bully. Just answer me one thing. Who gets custody of the dog? <laughs> He's yours. As a matter of fact, I don't care if I never see either one of you again. Oh, that's fine. I know somebody who will be delighted to take us in. A cute little uh, red-headed ghost. Met her in the movies one night. <clears throat> oh, you two... Timing. I've always suspected you. Just a minute. If you so much as look at another ghost, I'll... Oh, gee, it's wonderful to be single again. So many opportunities. No more excuses. <laughs> oh! My bush. George, come back here. Cosmo. What's that book doing in the fire? Uh, it's burning. Yes, but why are you burning it? I, uh, I, I've just finished it. <laughs> what the dickens are you doing in there? 
I'm trying to sleep. Well, there's Henry at his hope chest. Well, I hope I don't have to sleep here tomorrow night. <laughs> don't tell me Marion really went through with all that nonsense. She certainly did. She kicked me out of the room, insisted that I start courting her all over again. Oh, she didn't by any chance send you up here to find me, did she? She did not. I wish you wouldn't drag me into your domestic quarrels. Last night you cost me a mystery novel that I was dying to finish. Now I've got to go and buy another copy. Papa. What am I going to do? Well, you better go and marry that red-headed spook. Oh, I just made her up to put Marion in her place. Yes, look where it's put you. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I can't court Marion again. Hmm? Why not? Well, I'm a married man. At least I was. What are you reading? There's some letters from me to Henrietta, when I was courting her. Now, you could very well use some of my technique. I might end up being married to Henrietta. Well, you could do worse. I did. <laughs> but somehow, I I love the witch. Let me have a look. Hey, here, yeah, steady on, George. Those letters are personal. <laughs> oh, what's wrong? Henrietta, my own. When we are apart, it seems dark and dank. Well, what's the matter with that? It's very poetic. Mary and my own. When we're apart, life seems dark and dank. No, thank you. Your technique won't help me any. The trouble with you is you're completely insensitive. Well, I guess I'll have to start courting Mary and all over again. I worked it once. Maybe if I gave her the old, the old caveman treatment, huh? And you say I'm insensitive? Oh, brother. from? The usual place, dear, a drugstore. You burned it. This is another copy. You mean to say you bought a second copy? Yes, I, I want to see how it came again. Well, I must say you're not very economical. And you're not very observing either, Cosmo. Don't you notice anything different? Putting on weight, aren't you? Cosmo Topper. Yes, dear? It's a new hat you gave me for a present. Oh, well, wear it in good health, dear. Cosmo Topper, can't you take your nose out of that book long enough to pay me a tiny compliment? What did you say, Henrietta? I got all dressed up today and tried to look my best, hoping you'd take me to lunch somewhere. Topper, make her give me my hat back. Cosmo, wouldn't you like to take me out? No, no. You needn't be so vehement about it. I had no idea it would be so distasteful to you to spend Saturday afternoon with your wife. Now, look what you've done. She's perfectly right. All you husbands ought to learn to give your wives a lot more attention. If you hadn't reached for the hat... Hmm. I hope she makes you suffer. I hope she finds a handsome, charming gentleman to take her to lunch. Preposterous. Don't you believe it? Look how I'm making George suffer. Well, he's suffering all right. And so am I. I want to read. Topper. You don't suppose he's serious about that that redhead, do you? Well, it's quite possible. If I thought... If you thought... If you thought you'd never have started this thing, telling me he's not your husband, throwing him out of your room. Cosmo Topper, I never expected to hear that from you. Suggesting that I share my room with a man who's, who's practically a stranger. Oh, for pity's sake, I'm tired of both of you. And you needn't take out your bad temper on Neil. What's he doing here? He's a very literary dog. Always has his nose in a book. Come, Neil, before the nasty man bites you. Is Mrs. Kirby home? That's no way to treat a gentleman caller. Someone's playing tricks. <laughs> Tell Mrs. Kirby, Mr. Kirby is calling. What's the matter, Katie? There's no one at the door. Oh, that must be George. He's coming to court me. 
All right, Katie, I'll answer it. Uh, how, how do I look? You look ravishing. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Look at that. Rock, rock, rock. It was all alone. Uh, well, why not? You've heard of uh, flags flying, haven't you? Yes. Well. But I never heard of flags ringing. <laughs> Have you a lady living here by the name of Mrs. Kirby? She resides here, but she isn't living. In there. Topper, listen, I have to humor her. She's very sick about this courting bit. Would you please announce me? Very good, sir. Joe College, madam. Hiya, baby. Give daddy a hug. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Kirby? Hmm? Oh, oh, I, I beg your pardon. I forgot. You're looking radiant, Mrs. Kirby. <laughs> oh, come now. Uh, you've met Mr. Topper, haven't you? Oh, Mrs. Kirby's told me so much about you. All unpleasant. <laughs> yes, all right. Well, now that you've played your silly little game, perhaps you'll go away and let me read. Uh, uh, Topper, darling, uh, the young man and I want to sit in here. Will you entertain Mr. Kirby while I get my coat? <laughs> What are you up to? This is the middle of the day. George. George, what the deuce are you up to now? Oh, you don't have to bother entertaining me. <laughs> Put on that light. What's the matter? Did you lose something? Yes, my temper. Topper. Mustn't throw books at dogs. Neil, come back here. Neil. Neil, my book. Uh, where, where's Topper? When I see a dog about a book. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> What did I do? Neil dropped my book in the incinerator. <laughs> Mary. Marion? Marion, where are you? If that's no one again, they're going to get a piece of my mind. Where's Mr. Topper? Why, why, he's, he's... Is that you, dear? No. Oh, you've got company. That'll be all, Kitty. Yes, ma'am. Well, Cosmo, I hope you're satisfied. I always have been. Why? What's wrong? Well, it's this way, Mr. Topper. I will explain to my husband. Cosmo, where did you get this hat? Uh, at the shop there. At a hat shop. I passed the shop, and they accused me of taking this from the window of shoplifting. They uh, didn't bring charges, just asked me to collect the money. Forty-six dollars and fifty cents. Oh, bargain. So you admit you took it. Well, I can explain everything, dear. Here you are, officer. And a little something extra for your trouble. Thanks. I'm sorry, lady. Well, Cosmo, I'm waiting for your explanation. Well, you see, they told me at the shop that the hat was a steal. I suppose I... Well, I guess I misunderstood them. You expect me to believe that? No, I guess I don't. Well, all I can say is... It's bad enough you're stealing things, but when I get arrested for it... Excuse me, ma'am, but I found this in the incinerator. Katie, put that back. I want things where I can find them. What is that book again? You can't afford to buy me a hat, but you can buy books and burn them. Katie, you can have this hat. Well, thank you, ma'am. Well, Henrietta. Henrietta. Cut that out. <laughs> oh, oh, Marion, Marion. Me? No, they were for Katie, but as long as you have them, you can keep them. <laughs> Won't you come in? Thank you.
Marion, don't you think I've been courting you long enough now? Well, now, let's see. You started this afternoon? Yes, I think so. Oh, lamb chop. But wait a minute, you haven't proposed yet. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. <laughs> Marion. Leave that alone. Can't you see I'm proposing? <laughs> Marion. about the fellow and go on with the proposing. Well, are you or are you not going to marry me? Katie has on my hat. Well, what kind of an answer is that? And pay attention to me when I'm proposing. Well, you needn't yell at me. And you could be a little more romantic, too. Oh, all right. Marion, I love you. I've always loved you. Even when we were married. <laughs> That was beautiful. Then you'll marry me? No, George. Well, why not? You're too much like my last husband. <laughs> okay, I'll fight back. I'll just stop her being careful for some more coffee. Yes, sir. Mr. Topper, sir, Mrs. Topper asked me to ask you if you'd care for some more coffee. Tell Mrs. Topper no thank you. Yes, sir. Mrs. Topper, uh, Mr. Topper told me to tell you no thank you. You may take this away. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. There goes our interpreter. I have nothing to say to you. Edward, uh, aren't you being a trifle unreasonable? After all... Me? Unreasonable? You... You head stealer. You book burner. Henrietta. Get off my lap, will you? You and your wife have got me into a fine mess. Me and my wife have got me in a fine mess, too. What have you got there? Your love letters. I've tried everything else on Mary, and maybe this will work. I thought you found them revolting. I do, but I'm desperate. Henrietta, correction. Marion, my own. When we're apart, life seems dark and dank. <laughs> oh, George, that's the most beautiful thing you ever said to me. I got my sewing. Cosmo, what are you doing with those letters? I was just reading them, dear. You were? Oh, Cosmo. Read them to me. Henrietta, my own. When we're apart, life seems dark and dank. Topper, we're going to be married. That's nice. Nice. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm feeding the birds, dear. They're hungry. But the shoes? Oh, well, that's to keep away the cats from the birds. The picture I took of you last week. Oh. Cosmo, who is this? I repeat, Cosmo, who are these people? Oh, that, oh that's, uh, that's the man who developed them and his wife. <laughs> they, they always put themselves in. It's, uh, it's a trademark.
Thank you.